Welcome everyone. Just remember before we get started, if you want to download the project links, it will be down below in the description. Just all you got to do is enter your email and it's completely free. Welcome back everyone to this video. In this video, we will be uh, doing a few things actually, because I just realized we actually forgot to uh, implement our custom input. So we'll do that. We'll also manage groups. So we'll create grouping uh, and we'll kind of explain how it works. Uh, and then we'll also continue our bore logic. We're kind of started because we haven't even done anything just yet. So, okay. The first thing we'll do is grouping. So to make grouping, it's actually quite easy. Inside of our node, in our monster, if we go to groups, which is right next to signals, we can just simply manage groups. Now this is quite easy. All we'll do is add monster as a group. We'll add this node, the bore, as the node in that group. Now if I hit okay, what this does is now, uh, if I save this and go back, we now see this little guy. Now this guy essentially puts any sort of bore of this node into this group called monsters. Now the cool part about this is that it's kind of global in a sense. And what I can do now is I can say if body is in group monster, then I'll body queue free instead. So I can now remove this uh, and obviously any colon there. And if I hit play, the same thing should happen. Awesome, it works. Now we can do this for the player as well. Uh, and you'll see why in a bit, but essentially we want to be able to check for the player from the monster as well. So we'll do this for the player as well. Okay, now for custom input. This is quite easy, but we'll go through it together. So let's head over to the project settings. We will go to input map. And in here, we can start adding our own things. So let's add a walk right, walk left, walk up, walk down. We can also add an attack, a dash. We can add a pause, which we'll add later. Uh, and I believe that is it. So yeah, let's start putting these in. So for walk right, I can put D. For left, I can put A. Up, I'll put W. Down, I can put S. Space bar for attack. And then dash, maybe I'll do uh, B, something like that. Um, for pause, I'll do escape. And there we go. Now I have uh, more control over the input. And of course, you can always just do walk right as the right input, which is a physical key. So if you're wondering, if you just press this, the plus button and just click on your keyboard, whatever you want, then you will get the input that you want. So that is how you do that. The only thing you would have to add manually is let's say we add a left click. I can't just left click because that won't work. I have to actually go to the mouse button and select the left mouse button. And we might actually end up using this. So let's make sure we add that as well. Okay, so let me minimize these and you can take a look at everything I have, because we will be adding a dash and a pause later on as well. So do make sure we have everything here. Okay, now let's actually implement this and just change these. So we'll change this to attack, change this to move right, move down, move up, and move left. And that, is, that should be it. And now everything should work the same, but now I should be able to move. Uh, well, I'm getting an error here, so let's take a look what it's saying. Okay, so it's saying these don't exist. Okay, I said walk right and stuff, not move. That's why. So let's make sure that I get that right. Or just copy this and do that. Okay, now everything should work. There we go. And I can attack and everything which is very cool. All right, now let's continue or start our bore monster. So to start, we'll wanna add a script. Now in here, we'll do node empty. We'll create this in our scripts folders and we'll create a new folder for our monsters. We'll open, create, and here we go. Now in here, uh, we're gonna have to start with a few things. So what do we wanna start with? Well. What we'll do is we're gonna create a very simple state machine. So to do this, we'll get started with uh, the actual states essentially. And what we'll do is we'll create a enum, which is an enumerator, which is which I'll kind of show you what it is in a second. But we can say mob state is 
uh, not equal, bracket like that, and we can put idle, facing, attacking, uh, and death. And now what I can do is if I have a ready function, if I print mob state, let's say uh, idle, this will print zero. And this is a good way to uh, check to see what I'm doing. Now, this actually has to be a word like this. So now if I enter this, it should print zero. Now I've printed uh, attacking, this would print uh, two, right? Because it starts from zero, one, and two. So this is a nice way to kind of visualize what we have. Now, the cool part about this is now if I create a physics process function, physics process, delete that. I can now match the current state with whatever state I have. So I can say uh, mob state idle, for example, and this will match whatever my current state is to the mob state. Of course, though, we'll get an error here because uh, I don't have a current state. So I need to create this as a variable. So under the mob state, we'll say variable current state, and this will keep track of which state we're currently in. Okay, so so far we haven't done anything, but this is essentially uh, the way that mobs or our state machine will be set up. Okay, next we want to duplicate this uh, a few times, and essentially we will just uh, put these all in. So we'll say chasing, attacking, and of course death. Now for the idle, this is quite easy because all I have to do is say velocity is equal to vector two, zero, zero. Now, okay, what about chasing? Well, chasing, I would ideally want to be able to move towards my player, but how do I do that? Well, first I need to get access to my player. So how do I do that? Well, that's another thing we can uh, take a look at. So there's a few different ways of doing it. One neat way is what we can do is export variable player and this can be a, um, we can make sure that we define it as a character body 2D. And now what will happen is if I go into my world and I go into my bore here and inspector, you can see our player, we can assign it and I can assign the player. Now, the cool part about this is if I have, uh, let's say a tile map actually, because we might actually use that later. Go back to my bore and I reset this. I can't select the tile map. It doesn't even let me. So the cool part is that I define this uh, variable assign to only a character body 2D. And it even says allowed character body. Now I can show all, of course, but I still can't select it. So this is the cool part about this. Okay, now I have access to my player. Now what I can do though, is I can make sure that this player or this variable player is valid. And we can do that by saying is instance, uh, not ID valid, but just valid. We'll take that ID part out. We should say is valid uh, player. So if the player is valid, then we can do all this gibberish stuff, right? So then we can start moving and changing states and all this stuff. Okay, now the important part on the bottom, we want to say move and slide. Okay, next, we want to actually get the direction of our player. So we'll say variable direction is equal to the player dot global position minus self dot global position. Now, why are we doing this? Well, okay, first of all, let's also normalize the uh, direction that we get. And okay, let's take a look at why we're doing this. Whenever I have, let's say this is my Four, okay, and this is my player. Now, in a x and y axis, right? If I say player, if I want to get the distance between these two, what I would do is I would get whatever position this is and subtract it from this. Now, the reason is, let's say we have our bore at ten and ten, right? Vector ten and ten. So x and y is ten and ten. If this was twenty and twenty then the way to get from here to here, it's pretty obvious, right? It's 10 uh, to the right, 
and then 10 upwards, right? It's the difference of the X and Y. So we just get the X of the player. Right? So let's say P is player minus the bore dot X. And then similarly, we would do the Y minus the bore dot Y. Now that is what this is. The player dot global position is taking the position, which is a X and Y and subtracting it from the bore. Now we, we don't have to say itself, but it kind of makes it more clear if I say self. Okay. All right. Now in the chasing, what we can do is I can say velocity is equal to direction times speed, which we'll give that a number in a second, times delta. Now we'll have to create a variable speed. So let's create a speed variable. And this is going to be an integer. So let's say it's 5,000. Now there's a problem though, is how do we change the states now? Well, okay, by default, we can say that the current state is equal to idle because usually we stay idle in the beginning, right? Okay, but what about how do we chase it? Well, that's why we added the player detector. So if I go to my node here and I go to the signals and I connect the body entered, now I can detect if my player enters the area, which is cool because now what I can do is I can change the current state to chasing, but there's a problem. The problem is that we need to check to see if the body is the player. And how do we do that? Well, you might have guessed, we do the same thing as the body here or the, the grouping. Because if you recall, we added our player to the player group uh, players, we have to make sure we actually type it correctly. So uh, capital P and the rest are not capital. Okay, so now if I hit play, this should work. So let's test it. Now you can see he's chasing us. It does look a little weird, but that pretty much sums it up. Okay, what about the direction? Now there's more to it, but we'll do one thing at a time. So what we can do here is we can say if direction dot x is less than zero, then this means we're actually on the left side, right? Now what I can do is I can get my animation uh, sprite and I'll rename this to anim and let's load it on the top so we can say on ready variable anim is equal to get node anim. And now I can use this anim and say flip h is equal to true. Uh, true, here we go. And then I can say else if the direction is, well, probably bigger than zero, then I will just say false. Okay, now if I hit play, if I'm on the right side, then, or the left side, you can see that it switches direction and it follows me if I get into the area. Now, sometimes it's a little weird or a little hard to notice anything. So a way to kind of debug things properly with our uh, engine is in the editor, or sorry, in the debug, we can actually go to visible collision shapes, select that. And if we hit, hit play, we can now see the areas that are around our monster. And you can even see when I attack, the area shows. And now if I enter this, he'll start chasing me. Now, what if, here, let's actually reduce his speed a little bit, maybe 3000. Now, what if we leave the area? I want to change back to idle, right? Because now if I play and I leave, he's still chasing me and I don't want that. So in my player detected, we're going to uh, connect the body exited into our script here. And we can do the same thing. So we'll connect this. And instead of chasing, we'll say idle. And now you can see here that the vector or velocity is zero, zero. Now for the uh, attacking, this is actually quite easy. We can just say vector zero because we don't want to move when I'm attacking. And then I also don't want to be moving when I'm uh, playing the death animation, right? Okay. Now the rest is actually quite easy because now I can just say anim dot play and then play that uh, animation. Now, except for death, because death is the only one that we don't have. So in the rest of them, we will play uh, attacking or attack. For the chase, we'll play move, right? Did I name it move? Let's just double check, yeah, move. And then for the idle, we'll play idle. Okay, now for the death, we'll get access to our animation player here, and then we'll play death. Now for the death, we do want to await, but we'll do that in a bit. So 
Uh, so for the death actual the actual death one, we'll kind of change that up because it doesn't it won't actually work properly just yet, but we'll implement it a little later. So now you can see here it plays the uh, chasing animation, and if I move in, he starts playing idle, etc. And I can hit him and kill him. But now we want to also implement the attacking because we can't chase or we can't uh, enter the actual attacking state, right? So I want you to guess. I want you to do that between this video and the next. So I'm going to end the video here, but I want you to guess how we're going to implement our attack state. So how are we going to switch from whatever state it's in right now to attack? As a hint, just recall we have this other area 2D for the attack detector, OK? That's my hint. So in the next video, I'll be showing you the solution and how to implement the attack detecting. But until then, uh, good luck, and I will see you all in the next video.